Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another weekly roundup here on Stando Mania. I, of course, am your host, Stando, joined with Todd, the owl with the most. Go Todd Hedwig, go Todd Hedwig. Guys, I'm I'm looking into if there's a way to do this show on a more regular basis uh, than just once a week. Because, as you know, once a thing happens here on the internet, its relevancy is short lived. So if it's possible to do it more than once a week, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to do it right. Uh, and let golden Knight work on other stuff. Um, but that being said, we'll, we'll just have to test the waters and see how it goes. Um, before we jump into the news though, let's talk about the games that came out last week since we didn't do a weekly news segment last week. RPG Time, The Legend of Right came out on the Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PC, iOS, and Android. Came out March the 9th. Ash Walkers came out to the Nintendo Switch on March the 10th. Aztec, The Forgotten Gods, it came, it went everywhere. It went to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, the Nintendo Switch, the PC. On March the 10th, Chocobo GP, which is, uh, wow, a, a kart racer is set in the Final Fantasy universe. It, it made its way to the Nintendo Switch March 10th. Submerged Hidden Depths came to the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, March the 10th. Workshop Simulator made its way to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, also March the 10th. Young Souls. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, March the 10th. WWE 2K22, uh, definitely improvement over last year's, but that's not saying a whole lot, you know, because last year's or the last 2K game that came out was terrible. So they took a year off and did it do them any good? I, I hear some good things, but a lot of bad things when it comes to microtransactions. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and S. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC. It came out March 11th. Grand Theft Auto 5. Okay, never mind. Back it up. Back it up. Now let's talk about that news, that precious news. And one of the biggest stories to come out this week is how Ubisoft developers are, like, ripping. Elden Ring for its minimal UI design, uh, which, you know, these games have always had minimal UI. Uh, that's part of the user experience. Um, and, you know, I guess this Ubisoft dev was just kind of butthurt about it. But that being said, there was a Horizon uh, developer that was actually butthurt about the uh, quest design in these games. Um, maybe. Instead of, you know, criticizing a game that's doing its own thing and being well received by the public, uh, maybe you should look at your game and find out why people aren't 100 percenting those games. Maybe there's too much stuff to do. Maybe it's too formulaic. Maybe it holds your hand a little too much. Uh, you know, maybe the game wouldn't be so long if there wasn't a three hour intro. Uh, that being said, uh, a Reddit user named Gambuzino posted a heavily photoshopped image on March the 5th of Ubisoft's Elden Ring and what it might look like using an Ubisoft-like UI. And my God, is it a mess, bro. It is a mess. Uh, if you're looking for that tweet, it's at AlexDNZ. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, it's got text everywhere the mini map's super huge it's got all these items across the bottom of the screen i mean it looks it, it looks ridiculous press a to jump you know it looks typical ubisoft fanfare for their games the, the shit that everybody wants to turn off <laughs> when, when they boot up an assassin's creed game so uh yeah F worry about yourself ubisoft you're in no position you know Making fun of somebody else's game when you turn out the same game, I don't know, 1,000 times. And I mean, how many towers have we climbed now, guys, just to unveil more icons on a, ma a map at this point, really? H how many more mountain towers, circuit breakers that you're going to flip on top of an antenna array just to unlock new points on a map? Uh, it, it's it's kind of ridiculous, bros. It really is at this point. And it's so formulaic. 
I mean, it, that it's not just Ubisoft that does it. You know, I complained about the same thing in Far Cry. Uh, it's arguably one of the the worst parts of Horizon Forbidden West. Even though I really love her Horizon Forbidden West right now, it's a, it's a great game. But you know, that stuff's still in there. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I love that game. That stuff's still in there. Uh, and that's the the most meaningless stuff that I want don't want to do. Like I want to do the quest, the main quest, and the side quest for those games. But everything else, all the collectathon shit and all, all the all the wacky stuff that they put in their game, I have no interest. A lot of people don't have interest. And then I get you know griefed by Tech Gladiator. Why aren't you one hundred percenting the game? I thought you liked that game. I do like that game. I like 50 hours of that game. I don't like the 300 hours of mindlessly collecting and climbing and <sighs> bro. One of the biggest stories to come out this week, of course, Dr. Disrespect moving on from the Twitch legal dispute. This came on June 26, 2020. Uh, he was banned with out reason or the reason we're, we're never going to know the reason right why dr disrespect was banned i have my own theories to why he was banned my theory is that you know he was leveraging a deal to move to another platform and uh mixer and it didn't work out for him twitch found out that you know after after mixer closed maybe the doc is too expensive Let's just use an excuse to ban him so we don't have to pay him his multi-million dollar contract. And uh, I think that's what happened. Um, but anyway, on Twitter, this March 10th, 2022, uh, you see a picture doc uh, posted of a, it looks like a letterhead card. It says, I have, it's got his logo on it. I have resolved my legal dispute with Twitch. No party admits to any wrongdoing. Sign, Dr. Disrespect. And he follows this uh, up in, in, in a following tweet the same day in response to all your questions, the doc will not return to Twitch. So, uh, you know, does this mean he's unbanned from Twitch? Does this mean that since there's no wrongdoing from either party and the legal issues closed and they settled out of court, can he play with his buddy, Nick Merckx? God, I hope so. God, I, that, that would be awesome. I, I hope so. Um, then in other news, we had the Sony state of play uh, to some, this could have been a little let, let down to some, this might've hyped you up. This of course is a lot of studios from Japan. This is what we're getting from Japan studio, Japanese studios uh, within the company. So this is a very Japanese centric, um, state of play. We had uh future exosuits clashing with dinosaur hordes in the exo primal coming playstation sometime in 2023 i you know a lot of people were down on this because they were wanting the next crisis core this is from capcom uh a lot of people were wanting the next uh dino crisis game uh and you know to reboot the series or or do something with the license or the ip and all you know this kind of like <sighs> it kind of you know when you see the dinosaurs coming out and then you see the exosuits are they going for a Dino Crisis 4? N no, this is definitely not that. This is a games of service co-op multiplayer game with dinosaurs instead of zombies. So, I mean, jumping on that bad wagon, all right, you get Capcom, maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be good. I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I, I know a lot of people were let down. Uh, by this new IP because they want to return, you know, seeing what happened with resident evil, uh, and how well those reboots have done, how, how good those remakes have done. They want to see dino crisis remakes and, and jump back into that world. And sorry, bros. I, I, I don't even know if dino crisis was popular enough to be relevant today, but it was certainly wacky and popular back in the PlayStation one. So here's that. Uh, new Ghostwire Tokyo trailer. I man, the more I see this, the more I'm confused about what this game's going to be. So apparently, you got these ghost powers that you use to exercise other ghosts in the world. From what I'm gathering from the trailer, and getting to the big bad who gave you these ghost powers. 
Um, this is coming out to the PS5 March 25th. So we won't have to wait too long to see what it's all about, right? New Stranger Paradise Final Fantasy Origin demo lets you carry over progress to the full game. Um, you know, I am totally hyped on this game. It looks amazing. I, I'm a huge Final Fantasy nut and fan, and this looks to be different. This looks like not a Final Fantasy game, but in the Final Fantasy universe, and it's kind of weird. There's a little bit of maybe dimension crossing and walking to get crystals and shit. And it looks really freaking cool, and I, I, I can't wait to dive in and see what that's all about. Worlds Collide and Forspoken as Foray. Explores a land filled with corrupted creatures. This game has been pushed back. It's been kind of delayed um, until the end of the year. And it, that kind of makes sense. Uh, For Spoken is, you know, w- when we saw it, the gameplay um, for the first time last year, it looked a little like framey, like it wasn't well optimized on whatever they were running it uh, on. Uh, and, you know, it looks better now. And we got to see more gameplay of it. This, of course, is that. Uh, Square Enix title where the girl growing up in New York and she gets transported into like this big fantasy land. It's totally it's totally a square, a square idea. Right. And it looks really good. I'm really fascinated with this world. I want to learn more about this world. It's definitely on my watch list. And I'm I'm glad when games get delayed because that only makes games better. Gundam Evolution brings free to play FPS action to the PS5 and PS4 2022. This is a 6v6 first-person action game uh, with Gundams. So uh, if that's your thing, I don't see it breaking the mold. Maybe it's a new shooter to get uh, guys through this summer until the next Call of Duty comes out. Just have to wait and see. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Cowabunga Collection launches this year. Ooh, that's a biggie. We had a lot of Turtles games. It's like every Turtles game ever. It's going to be like 40 bucks to get this. And I totally worth, bro, this, this is a huge collection. I mean, Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, uh, Turtles Arcade, Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, both the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo versions. Of, like, dude, I'm in. Sign me up. This is awesome. So, um, yeah. I can't wait to be arcade brawling. I hope that this game has like some online, like, you know, these games are, you know, could be four player games because you got four turtles. And I wonder if they, they do that in, in, in this, that would be really cool. Um, good news for you weebs out there. Jojo's bizarre adventure, all-star battle Royale launches this fall. Um, this is a fighting game from the anime. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you about that. I, weebs rejoice. All right. <laughs> You're getting some Jojo. Um, Giga Bash brings multiplayer monsters and mayhem to the PS5 and PS4 this year. This looked like a fun, uh, kind of like a rampage game, uh, with multiplayer, um, you know, where you've got like, Mega Godzilla tearing down the city and the other monsters just fighting and brawling it out. Looks like it could be fun. Battle through hell and back and trek to Yomi. <sighs> this is a very. When it first came up, I thought, are we getting like a side scrolling Ghost of Tsushima game? And, you know, <laughs> you know, bring the samurais on, bro. Bring the samurais on. I like the uh, the the retro film aesthetic that they're going with. Uh, for some of these, you know, Japanese samurai films, um, you know, spaghetti western type feel to it. You know, I, I like it. Let's do it. Returnal Assistant update. It's going to add co-op and a whole new tower of Sisyphus mode. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, that's going to be a free update, too. So, you know, for free, Ascension is adding co-op or Returnal Ascension is adding co-op. And this whole new area to play through with its own new story and stuff. That's really cool when companies do that and they hand it out for free. That's like super love letter. Thank you for buying our game and taking a chance on us. It was a new IP and uh, it was well received. It's, it's cool to see uh, free updates like that come out. The Diofield Chronicle announced for the PS5 and PS4. This looks like a love letter to Final Fantasy Tactics. A lot of people thought it was Final Fantasy Tactics when it first came on, including myself. And, uh, well, 
Looks like it's definitely a love letter to that without being that. So it's Final Fantasy Tactics without being called Final Fantasy Tactics. I don't know about this name, though. This name is terrible. The Diofield Chronicle or the Diofield Chronicle. Like, what the hell? Like, you could have just called it Final Fantasy Tactics. With every Final Fantasy, you know, entry being set in its own universe, why not just go Final Fantasy, uh, Square? Why? Why? Anyway, Valkyrie Elysium. Uh, this is the next chapter in the Valkyrie saga. It descends onto the PlayStation 5, PS4, 2022. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. That's what happened in the state of play, right? So, let's talk about the games that are coming out this week. Starting off with Grand Theft Auto 5, which is going to rock its way on to the PlayStation 5, uh, Xbox Series X and S, March 15th. This is the next-gen iteration. Uh, if you were worried about buying this game for the umpteenth time, because <laughs> this game has been around for like 10 years, so you bought, you bought it on PS3, you bought it on 360, then you bought it again for PS4 and Xbox One. Then you bought it again for PC. Now you're buying it again for the PS5, Xbox Series X. Don't worry, guys. It's going to be 20 bucks probably on the Xbox Series X and S and probably 10 bucks on the PlayStation 5. Why is it cheaper on the PlayStation 5? It's a deal that Rockstar's got signed out with Sony right now. Uh, plus, Sony always, already given away the multiplayer experience over there for free. So that might be part of it. Uh, part of the deal is you get the multiplayer for 10 bucks. You get the single player for 10 bucks. That's how we're valuing our game. So Xbox not getting that deal. So they got to pay full price, which right now is 20 bucks. At least you're not paying 70 bucks for an updated version. Okay. That's what I'm getting at, bros. <laughs> at least it's not that. Hey, Fred, Phantom Breaker, Omnia, Omnia, Omnia. Is it, is it Omnia? Okay. Todd says it's Omnia. Phantom Breaker Omnia comes to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, March 15th. The Cruel King, not the Cool King, the Cruel King and the Great Hero comes to PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, March 15th. Oh, bros. Paradise Killer, which is a, a really cool name for your game. Paradise Killer. Comes to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. I don't know much about this game. I can see it, you know, probably set on an island in Hawaii, and you're, you know, there's a serial killer running loose or something. I don't know. Uh, well, we'll have to look at it and, and see what it's all about. Tunic comes out to the Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PC, March 16th. And then you've got Anno M Mutationum. Mutationum. Anno Mutationum comes to PlayStation 4, PC, March 17th. Some of these names of these games these days, guys. Monster Energy Supercross 5 comes to the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, March 17th. Persona 4 Arena Ultimax comes to PlayStation 4, Switch, PC, March 17th. Shredders comes to the Xbox Series X and S and the PC March 17th as well. Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. This is the one that I've been waiting on, guys. Uh, I want to dive into this and see how badass it's going to be. It comes to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, March 18th. Again, that's all of the news I got for you guys uh, this week. Uh, again, if I can try to do this on a more daily basis, not necessarily the, the, the game announcements, but the news on, on a more daily basis so that at the end of the week we don't have as much to go over. I'm, I'm going to try to do that and, and give uh, my friend Golden Knight something else to work on, right? Something, you know, maybe a top five video or something so, or, or those hidden topics, those, those bonus topics that we don't get to dive into very much. Maybe we can do something like that and give him something else to work on. Um, because, you know, the relevancy of the news depends on the news arriving to you promptly. And I feel like once a week, we're not getting that as uh, we're getting it done. Just not as done as I would like it to get. OK, anyway, guys, uh, we'll we'll look into it and see if it's possible and feasible. I love your faces, guys. I really do. And we will catch you guys maybe next week but 
definitely over in my Twitch stream. If you go over to twitch.tv slash stando, I promise you can see my, my lovely face playing video games five days a week. <laughs> Hope to see you there. I love your faces, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, bitches. Could have said bros instead of bitches. And you didn't have to be so rude.